Dear subscribers, as you know, we shared many information for you, and we are studying very hard to find current news for you. However, I cannot use this channel for future. Please follow our new channel called As Daily News Report and watch our video to support us. Link in description. Also, you can reach the video we shared on Daily News Report by clicking on the top right button. We highly recommend watching, subscribing and sharing. We will continue to share some news on this channel where we take precautions against some situations for future. Thank you for supporting us. You can already see them starting to bite. Look at real estate all over the world. So if, if this is the case, why do you think Trump is out there um, pushing the idea that the economy is, is raging on here and it, it's fantastic? I have said many times over the last at least six months that I'm shocked that he's taken ownership to the stock market. I mean, he himself is calling it the Trump rally. And I think that's a big mistake. Obviously, uh, he wants to, to push success of the economy as his success. And I mean, I don't really see, uh, I don't see the pickup. I don't see the pickup in the economy. If you look at, just look at the trade numbers. We just had the biggest trade deficit month ever. And, and much of what is being purchased, I just posted this on, on our site. Uh, 99% of purchases last year were made on credit. So why do you think then he went ahead and pushed tariffs and reciprocal taxes? Do you think this is to actually help the economy? Well, from a common sense standpoint, the U.S. had made bad deals for years and years, and he's trying to reverse the bad deals. The problem is it's going to create a, a trade war, and a trade war will mean less trade. And less trade uh, during a time where we have more global debt than ever, less trade means less cash flow. Less cash flow means it's harder to, to service debt along with higher interest rates, making that debt harder to refinance. So is, it, is there any way possible, Bill, to take this economy that this, this economy is a, a central banking economy? Is, it, is there any way to turn it around with the amount of debt with the manipulated um, statistical numbers they keep throwing at us. Is there any way that he can actually turn it around or does he have to bring it down to reset the whole thing? I think the whole thing has to be reset. I mean, mathematically, the debt that's outstanding cannot be paid in in current fiat terms. It's, it's not doable. Do you think his plan then is maybe to start this type of trade war to actually try to bring down the system in his way deep down he knows the system's going to come down and remember he's a real estate guy so hyperinflation with owning real estate with debt against it hyperinflation is not necessarily a bad thing until uh the debt if it got so bad until the debt got rewritten into uh previous terms like they did back in weimar germany they rewrote all the debt back to terms of gold so i think he knows it's coming down now whether it's it's done on on purpose or there's a false flag or something they do need something to point at and say well our policy would have worked except for this whatever this happens to turn out to be now while this is going on we have Rand paul and he's looking to um add this attachment, which is audit the Fed, to a banking bill. And Trump said, you know, in not so many words, that he would actually sign this. Actually, he has Andrew uh, Jackson hanging on his wall in the uh, White House. And Andrew Jackson is known of uh, getting rid of the central banking system. Do you think this might be part of the plan to try to get this audit the bill finally passed to go after the Rothschild central banking system? Um, I'm highly skeptical that it'll get done, but I would jump up and down if it does. Well, if, if it does get through and, and they do vote on it and they go ahead and they audit the Fed. There will be hangings. If they audit the Fed, there will be hangings, public hangings from what used to be street lamps. Now it'll be trees. I mean, what, will the central banking community allow them to actually go in and audit the Fed? I mean, think about what they'll find. 
Right. That's that's what I'm saying. I I can't. I, I know you said they'll be hanging, but but what do you think they'll do be, to to stop them from auditing the Fed? Take the whole system down. I mean, who knows? Look at what happened back in what was it, 2010? I want to say uh, when there was not a full audit the Fed, but there was some audit powers, and they discovered that 16 trillion dollars was lent all over the world, more than half to foreign banks in late 2008, 2009. I mean, they will find things like that. They'll find out just how dirty everything really is. And once they find out how dirty things really are, you would think they would have a case to say, do we really need the central banking system if they're not really working for the people of uh, of the country or, or the people around the world. Well, Dave, in a perfect world, what you're saying, yes, I agree, but it's not a perfect world. And the bankers are not going to lay down and, and be audited. I mean, the bankers will destroy the system or kick the table over before they allow an audit. And, and I agree with you. Don't get me wrong. I, I, I just want to play this out because, I mean, we, I'm saying that the people, Trump and, and, Maybe this is our opportunity to finally, you know, hit and reach out and get rid of the banking system. I mean, because right now, I mean, think about it. Um, we had Cohen resign. We had the CEO of Goldman Sachs decided to leave. I mean, we're starting to see a lot of individuals um, being removed or resigning themselves. I mean, Tillerson is out right now. And I'm starting to see that maybe at this point, individuals are getting nervous. They're, they're you know, saying, okay, I'm out, you know, because I see what's happening. The writing's on the wall. And maybe we're going down this path where uh, more and more individuals are going to be saying, you know, I, I don't want to be, you know, standing here when everything starts to fall apart on my, uh, you know, on the deep state, on the central banking system and everything else. Well, Dave, the only way that's going to happen is if there are, yes, there have been resignations, but there's really not been any perp walks. If you start to see uh, perp walks in finance, in banking, uh, pedophilia, uh political figures, if you start to see perp walks, then my my hopes for a Fed audit would be raised significantly. And I think you'd see some central bank uh, board members going to jail. But I don't think I don't think you're going to see the central bank go first. I think there's got to be some things happen before you see central bankers in handcuffs. Now, there's also this threat to the dollar. I mean, we've been talking about everything moving from uh, the West to the East. And now China has come up with the petro yuan. It's set to go live, what, March 26th? And, you know, we're starting to see signs where other countries are signing on to this. And they might start, you know, they might start to move away from the dollar and use the petro yuan especially the Middle Eastern countries and the Asian countries, those that are on maybe the Belt and Road and part of the BRICS. I mean, this would be a huge, huge threat to the dollar um, once this starts to happen. Well, it is a huge threat to the dollar. I wrote an article yesterday for subscribers, and I think that when you release this, I think I'll probably make the article public because it is important. Just go back the last three or four years and think what uh, what China and Russia have done. I mean, they've set up trade deals all over the world. They've set up treaties all over the world. They have uh, credit facilities set up. They have clearing facilities set up. In other words, they don't need credit from the West. They don't need the SWIFT system anymore. They don't need the dollar. And I think the timing is very, very curious. Actually, I don't think it's curious. I think it's it's not a coincidence at all. Uh, just go back two weeks ago, uh, Vladimir Putin made the statement that he, that Russia has hypersonic weapons that can reach anywhere in the world and can't be stopped. And then again on Saturday, China announced the same thing. And we also saw, uh, what our press has described as a UFO. And I highly doubt it was a UFO that was, uh, tracked at hypersonic speed. I think it's, it's one of, what Russia and China say they have. Um, put that together with the fact that China is in the process of usurping the dollar. What's the only thing that has held the dollar up for the last, what, 
uh, at least since 9-11, the only thing that's held the dollar up has been the U.S. military. And if it turns out that the U.S. military is technologically behind the curve, then there's no fear anywhere in the world of not using dollars. And that's what it's been for the last, well, 15, well, since, since 2001 at least, there's been fear of other nations of going off the dollar. They saw what happened when Saddam Hussein said he was going to accept euros for oil and what happened to uh, Gaddafi from Libya when they said that they were going to uh, accept euros for oil and they were talking about doing a, a gold dinar. They were both uh, overthrown and the countries occupied. So this is really a big deal. When you put it together, it's it's a, a one-two punch. The, the readiness and ability of China slash Russia to lead the world financially, lead the world in trade. Uh, they have their own clearing system. They're ready. And it's going to be interesting. There's, there's one thing we don't know for sure, but you can speculate. It's going to be interesting to see uh, what the Saudis do, whether they uh, join the Silk Road and become part of the Petro Yuan or whether they try to stick it out with the dollar. I, I think because of the amount of meetings that uh, Saudi royalty has had both in China and Russia, I think that what that tells you is they're in on the deal. I think a lot of countries are in on the deal. I mean, Iraq, Iran, Syria, Egypt, uh, Libya. I mean, they're all getting closer and closer to Russia. And I, and I think that, you know, instead of, you know, using the dollar, I, I think they will shift. Do you think that Putin actually came out with that message because, and, and I think this is what you're saying, is that he came out with the message that they have this missile system and same thing with China because they're warning um, the establishment that, listen, when we pull away, don't try anything. Exactly. And that the uh, technologically, uh, from a military standpoint, you know, a lot of people slough it off and don't think it meant anything. But we had... Uh, I think it was four or five destroyers last year that were T-boned and were clearly not underway because they were like direct hits and there was no scraping. So the destroyer was not even moving. So, it, I mean, you it, it looks like from a technological standpoint, our ships were turned off. And like what you just said, it looks like uh, Russia is the muscle for China. Don't try anything. You know, either accept it or you're going to get hit. Do you, do you think that the, the Russia and, and the Chinese uh, system, uh, the new system, is is this still central bank run? I don't think it's cent it's going to be central bank run in the terms that the world has been central bank run for the last 400 years. I think it, it will ultimately be central bank run with them running the central banks. Now, remember, China and, Ru and Russia, China in particular have amassed a huge amount of gold. My guess is uh, you've seen Russia, what they've accumulated, and you've seen the Chinese numbers, which are laughable. China's got more than likely well over 20,000 tons. So between the, the two of them, they're, they're probably pushing 25,000 tons, which is triple what the U.S. supposedly has, and I highly doubt the U.S. has more than a few hundred tons left. So, they, you know, they're, you're, you're looking at the yuan, which is going to use two backings. One, uh, like the petrodollar, it'll be the petro yuan. There will be demand for yuan to pay for oil trades. And also, China has this huge, huge hoard of gold. Is this gold going to be used to back the currency or is it just going to be there for confidence saying, you know, we have this new Petro Yuan, we have the gold in the background so you can be confident in the new system or are they going to use it to back the, the, the fiat currency? Well, some people believe that it's going to be, con that the Yuan will be convertible into gold. I don't really think that that's going to happen. I think it'll be used, like you said, uh, as a confidence factor because China saw what happened to the United States after World War II, after Bretton Woods. Um, our gold was slowly and then more rapidly, more rapidly bled from the Treasury because dollars were being turned back for uh, 
for gold demand. And I don't think the, the Chinese will do that. I don't think any gold is going to leave China. Now, for for China and Russia to make this move, I mean, do you think it's going to take years? Because there are financial pundits out there saying, oh, the petrol you want, it's young right now. It's going to take years for it to establish itself. And, you know, nothing will happen for like 10 to 15 years. No, no, not at all. I mean, this is this is called a line in the sand or a, or a light switch. Um, I think you're going to see the dollar start to fade very quickly and the yuan will rise very rapidly. Like I said, everything's in place for it. So, you know, they're, they're ready for this thing to, to, to go online. And I, I think you're going to see the dollar any time after March 26th. I think you're going to see some days where the dollar takes three, four, five point hits to the downside. And what's important to your listeners is what does that mean to them if they save, if they're, uh, they're invested in dollar assets? What it means is your purchasing power is going to collapse. And that's another way of saying we have hyperinflation coming to the U.S. And added to that, what about these nations that have stockpiled dollars in order to buy oil and now they can't use those dollars to buy oil or, or there's a less ability to use those dollars. They're going to send those dollars back to the U.S. Basically, they'll sell the dollars and that's pushing the price down. But those dollars coming back onto U.S. shores is going to create an absolute tsunami of inflation. And you're not just talking about, you know, like inflation, like three, six percent. You're talking. No, I'm talking, you know, 25 percent, 50 percent a hyperinflation where ultimately the dollar is going to its intrinsic value, which is basically zero. So what happens to uh, people's savings, uh, people's uh, pensions and and things like that? I mean, does it just all get wiped out? Yeah, well, they, they get hit with with purchasing power, their purchasing power will will drop versus a cup of coffee, a bar of soap, a roll of toilet paper. Everything is going to cost more. And in addition to that, we're going to have a problem with trade because dollars will not be accepted as they have been in the past. And the U.S. no longer makes many products. I mean, there's a lot of things that you go to Walmart for that are just simply not made at any price in the U.S., so there's going to be shortages and scarcity, and and obviously when there's shortages, the price even goes higher because people try to hoard whatever's left. So what does the U.S. do now? Since I mean our trade policy is completely different. We have the dollar. People use the dollar. You know they send us goods, and, or and, or you know that whole that whole model that they've created. What happens now if we're not the reserve currency? What do we do for trade? And since our manufacturing is pretty much all but gone. How do we trade with other countries? Well, what's going to have to happen, this is all part of the reset. What's going to have to happen is the standard of living of the average American is probably going to drop 50% or or even much more. And we're going to be there for many years. We're going to have to work hard for many, many years to rebuild manufacturing, to rebuild our, uh, I don't want to call it the standard of living, but we need to rebuild the way we live and the expectations of the way we're going to live. And we're going to have to live within or even below our means in order uh, over years and years to come back to par with uh, what it, what at that point will be considered the developed nations. I mean, we're going to be looked at as a banana republic. And we're going to have to, it will take many, many years of hard work and, and grinding it out to come back. Now, when you say change our way of life, I mean, today people, you know, they go out with their credit cards, they buy stuff on credit, you know, they have all the food in the supermarkets, you can get any product um, that you ever wanted, you can do it online, you can go to a store, uh, you can purchase a new car at any time um, by getting loans. I mean, how different is it going to be? Well, credit is going to be shut off to the United States. The world is not going to provide credit to the U.S., the only buyer of U.S. Treasuries is going to be the, the Federal Reserve, and that's outright monetization with no other buyers in sight. So credit is be, going to become very scarce. Interest rates are going to be much, much higher. And, you know, you go out to buy a car today, you walk into a dealership, 
you find the car you want, you sit down, you sign your name, and boom, you're out the door. That's going to be a thing of the past. That's going to be something that uh, 20-year-olds are going to be telling their grandchildren, well, it used to be you could walk into a dealership and just buy a car on credit. And much is going to be, much will rely on whether something can be purchased with cash or not. And uh, the, there are obvious imp implications to real estate also if credit shuts down. There's implications to whether or not there's going to initially, and I don't know how for, for how long, but it, it could very well be two or three months when credit finally does cease. There's going to be problems getting uh, food to grocery store shelves because food, transportation, uh, the the production, not the production, not growing, um, but the, the processing of food, it all relies on credit. So there's going to be a, a hiccup in the in the food supply, in my opinion, also. Yeah, I mean, pretty much almost everyone today um, lives their lives on credit. I mean, we have the credit card usage today is, I think it's at its highest point ever that we've ever been at. I mean, I mean, this is going to be a huge adjustment for everyone, especially those people who aren't, you know, making as uh, as much money as they would like, and they have to depend on credit cards. It's going to be very rough. It's going to be. It, it will feel like a disaster to the masses. What's very interesting is that why we're you know talking about this and how the country is going to change. Amazon and Costco they're selling emergency kits that can feed a family for a year. Do you think they're foreshadowing what's about to happen here? I'm not so sure that that they're bright enough to to look forward and and, and be benefactors saying you know you might want to buy this. I think there's outright demand for it. There's enough demand amongst the population of people who see something's wrong, even if they don't know what it is. Uh, there's enough demand out there for these big box companies to put that on their shelves. How, how long do you think this transition will be? I mean, for those people wondering, you know, if credit shuts down until we get back on our feet, I mean, is this going to be like a one month thing, two month thing? Or do you think it's going to be much longer than that? That's a, a tough question. Um uh, as far as food distribution is concerned, I don't know. It, it could be a couple of months. It could be six months. It could be a year. That's, it's hard to say. Uh, the marketplace will sort it out. What is more clear though is this, the, the total standard of living for Americans, for Westerners is going to change drastically. And it's going to change for the rest of anyone who's listening to this. You know, unless you're a six year old or something, anybody 25 years old or older, the standard of living in the West, in the U.S. is going to be lower than it is for the rest of your lives. So everything is about to change. It's the, the way that we've known to live in this country, especially those people who live through this country and those people, like you said, who are, you know, 25 years or 30 years old it's going to be a shock to mo most of, of the people in, of this country. Well, it's going to be a shock to 100% of the people in the country. I mean, you could be a billionaire and and still and, and have your, your capital in gold and silver and still have the same or higher purchasing power. The problem is the services are not going to be out there for you to purchase. In other words, you know, it's nice to go out and, and, and sit down and have a, a nice meal. At a, at a high end restaurant, but there's not going to be that many high end restaurants still around, if any, for quite a while. So everybody's lifestyle is going to change. I would say the only people's lifestyles who won't change are people who are 100% off the grid right now and live off the land. Their lifestyle will not change, but for everyone else, it will. What about those people that have been accumulating silver, gold? Um, because if the whole system is, you know, moved over to China and they have gold and Russia has gold, you know, and, and, and they're using that as a, a confidence builder. Won't gold, the price of gold be readjusted to their their system? Well, China has every reason when this takes effect, has every reason to mark the price of gold higher. And that's basically to shut everyone out. It makes their holdings worth more and it makes more it makes it more difficult for anyone who doesn't have gold, doesn't have silver, to accumulate it to catch up. 
So they have every reason to mark it up. And people in the West who do have gold and silver, that's going to give you a head start for when the system does come back up and running. It will give you capital to to purchase goods that have deflated versus your capital. Do you think the gold price has been suppressed to allow Russia and China to accumulate the gold at this very cheap price and then you know reprice it later on? I think that was probably the deal. Uh, I think as as far back as probably 2003, uh, deals were made to keep the price of gold and silver down so that they could be accumulated. And also, for, so the West could retain power and retain leadership for a while longer. It goes back to uh, Robert Rubin's thinking of, it doesn't matter how bad the deal is, but if you can kick the can down the, the road for six more months, it's worth it. And I think that is the mentality that the West took is, well, if we do this, if we do these deals, we'll be able to hold on to power for that much longer. And I think the end of the road is here. And how much longer do you, do you think it, it will be until, I mean, I don't know, you don't have an exact date, but I mean, is it is it getting very close, you think, that where the system is going to be moved over from the announcement of you know, these hypersonic weapons and the announcement that Putin made and everything that we're seeing, do you think we're very close? Well, Dave, it's already started. I mean, look at the dollar. The dollar's down, what, uh, 12, 13, 14 percent from where it was a year ago. Look at interest rates. Interest rates are going higher. Look at, I mean, the stock market has has broken. Uh, the the trend has broken. Just look at long term trend lines to go back to 1982, and you'll see all. Look at interest rates all around the world. That trend line all the way back to 1982 is now broken. Look at LIBOR. It's it's showing a clear uh, tightness in credit. So to answer your question, I think. You, you're already, you've been witnessing it. The shift has already started. And of course, the shift started back when, uh, China really began accumulating gold because wherever gold flows, so does power. Yeah. What, what I'm talking about is like the main shift, you know, like in 1971, when we were coming off the gold standard and moving on to the petrodollar, you did notice a change. You noticed that, you know, there was, um, gas lines. Uh, you couldn't get fuel. Unemployment was, you know, very, very high. Interest rates were very high. They started to create a lot of currency at once because we were coming on, coming off of the gold standard system, moving on to the petrodollar system. And, and you can definitely, you know, back then you, you saw a change. You saw something definitely was happening. Of course, the, the corporate media was out there saying we had, you know, oil shortages and things like that. But I mean, are we going to see that same type of change happening like live where people are like, oh, wow, I can't get oil. I can't get gas. I can't get food. We're, we're actually going to see that. Well, yeah, that's an easy one. Uh, a, when the shift happens, the dollar is going to be less accepted by oil exporters. And yeah, there's the story that we're going to be oil self-sufficient. I, I can't see, I mean, if you look at the way shale works, you get the tremendous amount of recovery early on and then production collapses. But from the standpoint of being able to import oil, dollars are going to be less accepted and we're not going to have a supreme military to the rest of the world where countries are afraid not to ship oil to us. Understand that the U.S. as of right now has the lowest uh, cost of gasoline anywhere in the world. And that's because the U.S. military. And if the U.S. military is no longer supreme, we're no longer going to have the cheapest uh, gas prices in the world. Look at, go anywhere in the world and look at oil price. I mean, look at gas prices. You're looking at six, seven, nine dollars a gallon. And you got people fretting here. Oh my gosh, oil or uh, gasoline is going to go to three dollars a, a gallon. What you're saying is that like the fuel prices, they're going to go up with everything else. It's going to go up with food. We're going to see, you know, nine, 10, maybe $11 worth of, you know, uh, everything, everything is going to go up. The cost of everything is going to go up. It's, I mean, you're, you're getting specific with oil and, and gas. The cost of anything and everything 
you can possibly purchase is going to be more because the value of your dollars will be less and there will be far less demand for dollars. What, what you're talking about, I just want everyone to, to understand that this 2008 compared to what we're going to, what, what's going to happen is going to be like night and day. Yeah, it'll be a ham sandwich. I mean, 2008 was a warm up for what's coming. What's coming is going to be 2008 to the downside on steroids in, in virtually everything. You're talking about the, the, the collapse of a, a credit based system and emphasis on the word system. This is the end of a system. It's, it's a systemic change. Bill, thank you very much for being on the X-22 Report Spotlight. I really appreciate it. Once again, how can people see your work? Uh, you can go to www.jsmindset.com. Bill, once again, thank you very much for being on the X-22 Report Spotlight. Thanks for having me, Dave.